Well, he's the Australian heavyweight champion and one of the most exciting fighters of modern times. His name is Justice Hooney. And on June 16, he takes on Paul Gallen on main event. He's joined me here today as well. Justice, thanks so much for your time. Can I start by asking you, what is the Justice Hooney story? We've seen you in the ring, but where did you come from? I came from a, a place in Brisbane, Queensland called Sunnybank. Um, and I grew up there. I always grew up around sports. I was always, I was always in love with sports. Um, you wouldn't catch me in the house much when I was younger growing up. I was always down the park or, you know, out and about playing with neighbours and stuff. So, um, yeah, that, that's where I grew up and, uh, yeah, pretty much everything happened from there. I started playing footy there um, at the, just at my local park, two houses down from um, mine. And then, uh, yeah, I went on to play uh, rugby league at South Sunnybank. And then, um, yeah, I slowly moved on to boxing for, for the fitness side and, and to drop some weight because um, I, was, I wasn't a very skinny kid when I was younger. But, um, yeah, I, I had to drop some weight, so I, I got into doing boxing because my old man and uh, my brother were always uh, around the combat sports and boxing stuff. So, yeah, I started following them around to the, the boxing gym and, yeah, pretty much everything fell into place and I went from there. And what was it that made you choose boxing and decide that this was where your life could go? Um, I think it was mostly the, the discipline side of it and, and the fact that it was an individual sport. Like um, you, had, you didn't have a t team there to back you up. It was, it was all on you. Um, all the decision you make, um, is all, it's all on you. So um, that's kind of why... I, lean towards boxing and um yeah that's that's why i've loved it and it's and it's shaped me into the person i am today um which i'm very happy with the olympics are a huge focus for you this year and you are in the olympic team which is hugely exciting and um one of the favorites to win a gold medal as well can you remember when you first realized that that was where you wanted to go that you wanted to get to the olympic games as a boxer um i think it was uh i realized when it was the 2008 olympics i'm pretty sure um, that was the first Olympics I ever watched as well. So, what did you um, like about it? You just thought it looked just, fun. Yeah, just the uh, the crowd and stuff. Obviously, when I when I go over to represent this year, there there won't be any spectators and stuff. But just everything about it, and and like if you bring a medal or a gold medal home, it's life changing. So, um, yeah, and no nobody's brought a gold medal home and. Um, I think that's what the whole Australian team wants to do. And we've all got the potential to do it. Honestly, this is a, for me, this is the strongest boxing team we've had um, ever. So, yeah, I'm just grateful I can be a part of it. You've already had great success as an amateur boxer, winning a medal at the World Championships. Tell us about some of those tournaments and what it's been like for you representing Australia on the world stage. Yeah, it's been amazing, eh? Um, I, I'm just grateful that I've been given the opportunity um, to represent my country, obviously it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of time um, and a lot of sacrifices to uh, get to that position. But yeah, it's been a, it's it's an amazing feeling being up on that podium and, and singing the Australian national anthem in, in front of other countries around the world. Uh, so yeah, I, I I I really love it. I think that's what I love most about um, fighting for. You're like in the amateurs, you fight for your country, and uh, when you stand up there, you you like take it all in, and it's you know you show a lot of pride. You won a world uh, championships medal, which is a massive achievement. But uh, you were on track for a gold medal. Do you look back at all on the illness that uh, struck you when you were headed towards those final fights, and I'm think uh, that that's a great pity? Yeah, it, it was it was a pity. It was a shame that um, I couldn't go forward and compete. Uh, finish off the rest of the tournament. Um, it's just something that was out of my control. I, I, I felt really sick um, and yeah, I couldn't finish off the tournament. I, I even fought in the quarterfinal um, and I was sick then and then I, I got worse from there. So yeah, I had to, uh, unfortunately I had to pull out of the um, tournament and um, yeah, I finished up with a bronze medal. Do you still cherish the bronze medal? Yeah, of course. Uh, Everything I do, I, I cherish. Like um, it, it takes a lot of hard work. Like I said, so any um, any achievement I, I get in the amateurs and stuff, um, 
I take it all. I take it all in, and I embrace it all, and I'm I'm very grateful for it. Do you think the success there and the fact that you didn't get that gold medal is driving you even further towards Tokyo? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, definitely. It's it's what drives me. Like it's good to have a loss um, in the amateurs and stuff because that's how, that's how you learn. I, coming up through the amateurs, I had a I had a lot of losses, and um, I went through stages where. I would have like five losses in a row. So um, yeah, all of those losses is what's got me to this point today. And um, yeah, without the losses, I feel like you wouldn't, you wouldn't um, get to the point you're at today. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for those losses. The discussion turned to you turning pro even while being an amateur. Um, are you glad that the rules change while you've been around so that you can fight as both a professional as an amateur at the same time and still go to the Olympic Games? Yeah, I'm very happy the the rules were changed. It, it kind of, it was, it's like it was meant to be because um, if if I wasn't allowed to turn pro, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had a fight since I, um, since March 2020 and which was the Olympic qualifiers. So um, yeah, it's a, lucky it was changed and I got to go pro and um, stay active and that's exactly what I've been doing. What were those conversations like with your promoter Dean Lonigan and with others, your father obviously Rocky and uh, your management about going into the professional ranks? Uh, do you remember what was going on and, and what you were feeling? Yeah I was feeling kind of um, that I was starting to get complacent because I was just training. I, I trained all of 2020 without knowing what was going on with the Olympics or anything and, and when I was going to fight next. So um, when we had the meeting uh, with Dean Lonergan and saying we're, we're going to turn pro and um, we're going to make some big moves, I was very happy with it because coming into the sport, like all I've ever wanted was to leave my name behind and um, leave a legacy behind. So, yeah, when Dean Lonergan uh, set the contract out and um, we went over everything, and he said we had some, we were going to make some big moves. I was, I was very happy with it because um, that's all I've ever wanted to do coming into this sport. And you made history in your first professional fight because you're the only fighter ever to win the Australian title and the heavyweight title on debut. Um, when that conversation was had and they said you can fight for the title in your first ever professional fight, did you think... Oh, maybe we should wait on that, or do you know that that was where you wanted to go? No, I felt I felt like I was ready. Um, obviously, because I I know um, Fanger, who I who I fought um, Django, I know him very well, and I I knew I could pull it off and I could get the win. And yeah, like like you said, to win an Australian title on debut, it's crazy. It's never been done before, and to be the first person to do it, uh, it's a blessing. And I I'm just grateful that I was given the opportunity to do it um, and I got to do it in front of our home crowd so yeah amazing atmosphere amazing way to come into the professional ranks as well. Did you have nerves coming out into your first professional fight a lot of people do when they're making their debut but they're usually fighting against a journeyman on an obscure yeah. show on an undercard but you were the main event live on television and fighting for the title. Yeah definitely I definitely had nerves um, it was it was all starting to hit me just before I was about to walk out, I was thinking to myself, I'm actually making my professional debut here. Like, um, but I think I think as soon as I walked out and I seen all my family and friends there, it, it made me it made me feel more at home. And um, yeah, once the first bell ring uh, rung, I was in my comfort zone. I was ready to go. But yeah, I definitely had nerves going into that fight. I have nerves going into every fight, to be honest. Um, but yeah. It's like soon as soon as that bell rings, there's a switch in me that switches, and uh, yeah, I just go to work. When you have those nerves, are there any doubts in there, or is it just a little bit of apprehension about what's going on? No, nah, there's no doubt. Uh, the way I look at it is that I've done all the hard work, and um, it's just time to do the fun part. It's just, I think what you're thinking about is just like. Um, making sure everything goes the way you, you want it to and, and the way you visioned it to go. So, um, yeah, what, but once you're in there and once the bell rings, it's like, oh, we're in the moment now. It's time to switch on, like do everything that you've been thinking about and, yeah, 
it goes on from there. How do you look back on the fight with Django Apolu? Were you happy with your performance overall? Yeah, obviously my debut, my first professional fight, um, I was very happy with it. I was glad I got the stoppage and I was happy it went the, the seven rounds um, because I think a lot of people were doubting me making the transition coming from the amateurs, moving into the pros and especially into a 10-rounder. Um, so I pretty much just showed that I could go the long rounds if it, if it did go the long rounds. It seems like you're really conscious of making history, of establishing your name in the books for having achieved certain things. You managed to do that in your first professional fight. That must give you a great sense of pride. Yeah, it gives me heaps of pride to know that I'm doing everything that I've dreamed of doing. And, um, yeah, to finally be in this position I am today, uh, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's a dream come true. And it's taken a lot of hard work and a lot of um, time. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's all worth it at yeah. the end of the day. Your second fight was against Arsene Fosso, who was also undefeated, had a really good amateur record as well and was known as a big puncher. What was this fight like? Uh, this, this fight, I felt like I stepped it up again. Um, I started, started to use my angles a lot more. Um, I was working the uppercuts really well, as you can see in there, and just working the body more. I know, I know like, when you work the body, it really ties them out, especially doing the longer rounds. Um, it starts to take a toll and you're taking the, all those body shots. Um, and it's pretty much the same as we've seen uh, in my recent fight against uh, Christian Zoy. It, it takes it out of you. So, um, yeah, definitely the, my body work is what I, uh, what I take out of all of these pro fights because taking those big shots to the body, you're not going to be able to, like, do it 10 rounds straight, you know, like, without getting tired, so... When you're looking at this vision, what are the strengths of Justice Sooney, the heavyweight boxer? Just speed, footwork, and um, yeah, making making sure I'm I'm always I'm always moving. I'm always giving them different angles, so I'm like I'm not just standing there in front of them. Um, so yeah. How much of this is instinct, and how much of it is specific tactics that you've been trying to employ? Um, I think. Like when you when you're in there, the fight can go any way. So like, I kind of most of it is just what's in front of me. I like to I like to box what's in front of me, because um, you can go off someone's past fights and everything, but um, it's always different when you get in the ring. Uh, so I like to just obviously the stuff I work on in the gym. I like to put it in there, but um, you got to be cautious because. You know, they, they could be bringing something new, something different. Um, so, yeah, most of it is, like, off what you do in training and then um, the rest of it is off in instinct. There was another fight booked after you had defended there against Arsene Fosso, but it was delayed and eventually uh, it was canned for another fight much later. Um, a few things happened in that little gap. Uh, some footage emerged of you getting dropped in sparring uh, yeah. and it then was uh, revealed that there'd been an, another incident as well. Do you want to tell us about that period of your life? Yeah, sure. Um, so obviously, like I said, we all make mistakes and um, I, I kind of just got complacent myself I um, thought I was better than what I was and yeah I, I found out real quick what what could happen so um yeah I'm just glad I, I've got past that and like I said it's the way you bounce back from your mistakes and um me personally I think I've I've done really well on on coming back from that um but yeah I got I got dropped clean inspiring and then um I had a bit of an in incident before that outside of the ring outside of boxing and yeah you just gotta you just gotta stay focused and on the right track um, once again my brother came through and and helped me through that period of time uh, which was uh, the start of this year and yeah we got we got through it and we're here today we're we're feeling fit healthy um, and yeah it's no dramas the story goes that you were mucking around with some mates and uh, ended up with concussion is that what happened yeah, so I was the Saturday night and I was mucking around with mates, um, and then things went from bad to worse. Uh, ended up hitting my head on the concrete really bad, 
but I didn't I didn't pay attention to it. I kind of just slept it off. Went back to training on on the Monday like like nothing happened, and then um, yeah, I think it was a couple of weeks after that, I went back and I had my first spy back after the Asim fight, and um, yeah, I got I got dropped clean. What do you think of people who? as a result of seeing that footage, you've gone, oh, well, he doesn't have a chin, that's going to be his problem. And, and that would have been a rumour that you would have heard in Australian yeah. boxing circles. How do you respond? Um, I, don't, I don't pay attention to it. Um, it. It was inspiring, and inspiring is all about learning, and that's exactly what it, what it was. It was a learning curve for me, and um, I've taken a lot from it, and, and I won't be going back to it. So, you know, it's, a, it's all good to get dropped inspiring. Everyone, everyone gets dropped inspiring. Um, maybe not everyone, but a lot of people have gotten dropped inspiring. Um, and it's fine because that's where you work on stuff. That's where you um, practice what you've been learning in the gym and what you do on the pads and the bag. That's where, that's where you get to practice it. So, um, yeah, I, I don't take any, anything away from anyone that gets dropped inspiring. Um, because it's inspiring. At the end of the day, you're not you're not getting um, awarded a win or anything if you get dropped in inspiring. So that's the way I look at it, anyways. Your return fight after what had happened there was against Jack Maris on the Gold Coast. A lot of criticism about taking a fight against someone who clearly isn't on your level. But uh, we can't criticise Jack Maris. He did his best. But how do you respond to people who decided to bag you getting in with him on that night? Yeah. I I got nothing to say about that fight. Um, obviously, on paper, we were both two and zero. So um, yeah, we we thought he was going to bring a, a very tough, hard fight, um, and he said he was going to bring his A game. He said he could beat me over six rounds. Well, we offered the ten round and um, for the Australian title, but um, he said he could beat me over the six rounds. But yeah, I guess it is what it is at the end of the day, and. Um, we just got to keep moving forward from it. Um, you won this fight uh, very early. Do you get anything out of a fight like that, out of uh, essentially taking someone out so quickly? Um, nah. And honestly, it, it wasn't my best performance. If I just boxed um, like you seen last night, I think um, I could have like did it in a much better fashion. Um, but, yeah, with all the hype and stuff that's gone on around me and everyone was – like saying, oh, they want the knockout, and I was listening to everything that was going on around me. Um, it was it was kind of a it was a very sloppy performance from myself. Is that because of that break, or was it anything lingering from what had happened in the incidents? Um, no, I think I was. It was just the way the mindset I had going into that fight. All I was thinking about was stopping him and getting the knockout. Um, and yeah, when you when you try to force things in the ring, uh, it doesn't usually happen the way you you want it to. So um, that's why my my recent fight against Christian Zoy, I just came out. I wasn't looking for anything more than than just going out and boxing and um, keeping it smooth and silky and and very skillful. So yeah, you were meant to fight against Lucas Brown, and then you and your father sat down and watched Lucas Brown's fight against Paul Gallen. Tell us about that night and what you saw and what you decided? Yeah, that, that night was a big shock to a lot of people, I think. Um, yeah, so we, we were con contracted to fight uh, Luc Lucas Brown on um, in July, early July or something. Um, but yeah, obviously this big upset changed everything. Um, I think it was right after this fight, like pretty much when the, when the ref called it off, um, I turned to my dad, I looked at him and I said, I'm not fighting Lucas Brown. Like, especially after um, fighting um, Jack Morris, I was, I was thinking, like, I want, I want tough fights that, that I know will give me challenges. So, um, yeah. And, look, obviously, Gallon brings, every, like, toughness, fitness. Uh, he's been an athlete for a very long time now, so he's very durable. And that's, that's what I'm looking for, someone that will be on my chest and, and give me a hard time because I feel like that's where, that's where I shine the most, when someone's pressuring me and stuff and um, I get to use my footwork more and, and my speed.
Were you surprised that that fight could be made, you against Paul Gallen, given that he's an NRL player who switched over to boxing and you are who you are with the professional uh, credentials that you have? Did it shock you that Dean Lonergan was able to make it happen? Yeah, when, when I first got told, it was a bit of a shock to me because um, I, always, I always thought, oh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be good to have a fight against Paul Gallen. Like, that, that'll bring the eyes in. Um, but I never thought, like, we'd get it over the line. Um, but, you know, my promoter, one of the best in the business, um, he, he pulled some strings and, yeah. And when he first told me it was happening, I was like, what, like, damn, I'm actually fighting Paul Gallen. Uh, a lot of people kind of said it, but it's just said it as a joke. But, yeah, now it's actually happening and um, I can't wait for it. Honestly, this is the most excited I've been since um, we, we got told that we're fighting for the Australian title on debut. So, yeah, very exciting times. And three weeks out exactly from that Paul Gallen fight, you opted to have another fight against Christian Soy. Um, a lot of criticism from Gallen's camp for you taking that fight because of the risk that it placed uh, that fight in. But what were the reasons for you still going through with this fight against Christian Soy? Um, pretty much to keep me active. Um, I, like, I wouldn't really call um, the Jack Morris fight, like... A, a full fight, you know, it, it went for like two minutes or something. So, um, yeah, I, I felt like I had to get back in the ring and I needed a, a warm-up fight before I went took Gallon on. Um, and, yeah, this was the perfect fight. And, obviously, I, I got to showcase um, a bit more of my boxing ability and um, my footwork, my speed uh, last night. And, yeah. Did we see we you box done. like a boxer who had a bigger fight in three weeks, do you think that you would have fought differently had the Gallon fight not been so imminent? Uh, I think I definitely could have turned it up a, a couple of notches um, and I probably could have got the stoppage if if I turned it up um, to the next level. But, um, yeah, my team didn't want to... We didn't want to do anything too reckless or careless. Um, we didn't want to get caught trying to look for the, the stoppage. So we just kept it long. Um, and classy, and we try not to get hit with too many big shots in the head. Paul Gallen was ringside. What do you think he made of this performance, being so close to it? Um, obviously, I, I know he thinks it's disrespectful um, taking a fight this close to uh, our big showdown, but, yeah, the, the posit positive thing he can take out of it is that I came out of it injury-free, um, yeah, no harm, and... I'm ready to go for the big showdown, June 16th. He said that he took some confidence out of your performance, given you couldn't stop Christian Soy or at least chose not to. Um, how would you respond to that extra confidence that he seems to have heading into your showdown? I feel like Paul, that girl's going to need all the confidence he can get. Honestly, um, he, he thinks he's, once again, he's judging me off uh, that fight um, that just happened and... Um, I'm going to bring, like I said, there's levels to it and I'm going to step it up another level. Um, and, yeah, he's going he's gonna to have a tough night in the office. I'll say that much. What do you think he's going to try and do? Is it similar to what he managed to do against Lucas Brown or is there something else from Paul Gallen? I think it'll be very similar. I think he's going to come in and try and uh, put the pressure on me. Um, like he said, he, he wants to just sit on my chest pretty much, um, which I'm not going to let happen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay, stick and move, hit him, hit him from the outside. And, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a JBH night. And are we going to see 100% of Justice Hooney this time around? You still have the Olympics to look forward to this year. Are you saving anything for that or do you go straight into this fight and show us it all? No, nah, I'm, go I'm going in with um, no other thought but just taking on Gallon and, and getting the job done. So uh, I'm not thinking about anything else. Um, right now I'm just thinking about the Gallon fight um, and, yeah, getting the job done. What does that mean, getting the job done? What are you going to do in this fight and how's it going to look? Pretty much the same, um, but just take it up a, a couple of levels and, and pick up my work rate. And how do you think it finishes? Honestly, I think I, I'll, I'll be able to break Gallon down um, and hopefully get the, the late stoppage. So you win that fight, then you move off to the Olympic Games. Tell us your prediction. Are we going to see a gold medal? 
Yeah, um, that's that's what all of this is for. It's all of this is for working towards the gold medal. This is all my preparation um, in my uh, journey to the Olympic gold medal, pretty much. So uh, um, yeah, this is all pretty much work for me. Like uh, you do the hard work and you get the rewards in the end. So hopefully the reward is a gold medal and I can bring it back uh, for Australia. Well, Justice, you've got a massive little period ahead, so we cannot wait to see this fight against Paul Gallen. Thank you so much for your time. We're going to really enjoy the build-up. Are you going to enjoy the build-up, do you think, going back and forth with someone who's done it so many times? Um, yeah, I've, I've been enjoying it. Everything um, about it is... Uh, I'm starting to get used to it more, you know. Um, I'm, I'm not a very big talk or anything, and a lot of people that know me know that. Um, but, yeah... There's a, there's a time where you have to um, come out of your shell and you just gotta, you just got to start giving it back. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's very exciting. Yeah, it really is very exciting. Thank you so much for your time and for showing us a bit more of yourself today. Uh, we'll talk to you soon and we can't wait for this big, big fight. Thank you, Ben. Thank you for having me on. That is Justice Hooney. Cannot wait to see him in action. Of course, he takes on Paul Gallen. You'll see it on main events on June 16th.